Uh, we discussed at the last meeting having a rules of conduct or guidelines and or housekeeping things for um, the running of the meeting. I spoke with our remote secretary, Miss Eaton, and she said the easiest way for us to do a, for her to record our vote is when we do take a vote for everybody to, uh, if I take a yay vote, just speak your name into the microphone. That way she can record the yeas. Then I'll have the noes go. Those who say no can speak their name into the microphone. And then I will do the abstentions. And if we can keep it relatively in order going around the table, um, that way the documents, the records show how everybody voted. It's easier for her to pick up on it instead of trying to gauge around the room who's got their hands up. Um, it shouldn't take us too, too much longer, and it should give us a definitive record moving forward um, for our secretary. Am I interpreting that to be pretty much what we did last meeting? Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it was very right. similar. Hopefully it was a little disheveled last meeting because I was still trying to get it underway, but I think... Uh, I like the way you did it last meeting, just calling the names for yes and then calling the names for yeah, that was Yeah, yeah. I'm actually... That's probably a better way to do yeah, it. I'll yeah. call for yes votes. I'll have you raise your hands, and I will read the names across the yeah. table. And then we'll call for no votes. I will read the names for that. Um, that way she doesn't have a problem here. If that mic's out, she doesn't have a problem hearing the votes on. <coughs> um, does anybody have an issue with the way the, thing, the voting and record keeping is going to be? Okay. Um, guidelines and rules of conduct for the meeting. Um, this was something that I believe Mr. Jones brought up at the last meeting. Um, I think it's a good thing to discuss and kind of get everybody on the same page, you know, being a new board. Um, my goal for this meeting is for us to all, and I think everybody's on the same page, is be civil and encourage good conversation, have a good forum here for discussion, because ultimately we are um, the voice of the voters, and we're trying, I think the goal of us is to give the voters as much information in regards to the budget as possible. That being said, we have a lot of people here with a lot of expertise and a lot of ideas, and um, not always are going to sync up. but we should be able to have a good discussion on it. And um, I don't want things to get out of hand. I don't think we need to have a specific formal set of rules. Um, but I will ask that everybody, um, I can guarantee you that everybody will have the time to speak their point. I ask that if there is redundancy, there's a point of being redundant to make your point, and then there's a point of excessive redundancy. Um, I'd ask that we keep that to a minimum. I mean, uh, we all know what we're trying to get across, and, and um, I will um, try to keep the meetings as concise and as civil as possible. Um, I don't think this is going to be an issue. I think last year we, were very, we did a very good job. I think uh, I'd like to build off of that, um, but I also want to give everybody a chance to speak and be heard uh, on the matters, and let people, when they're speaking, if they have a, a point to bring up, if it's okay to yield the floor to ask a question, let them ask a question and, and have it be an entertain, enter, not entertaining, but interactive discussion um, between members because I think that's how you get most of your um, information out there. Um, I have a feeling if we require to initiate more rules moving forward, I think we can discuss that later on, but I think until we start getting into the meat and potatoes of the budget, we should be able to uh, hopefully have a nice interactive session, and um, move forward. <coughs> um, anybody have anything to add? Yeah, clarification, sure. Thanks, if I could. Uh, so we're going to continue with speaking when you're recognized <coughs> by the chair, achieving that recognition by having your hand raised. Correct. That you're going to allow uh, other people to ask the person who holds the floor, the one speaking. Correct to request that they make or, or ask a question during his speaking. And the speaker can then say yes or no, or give me a minute and let me finish my point, and I will say yes. But, but when he does yield to the question, he's yielding to that person. It's not an, invite, an invitation to everyone in the room to start pummeling him with questions. Correct. Right? Just one clarification on yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's a good way. I mean, if, if Mr. Jones has a point on a subject and, and he is um, informing the rest of the group on that subject and I have a question, I would raise my hand and Mr. Jones would then acknowledge me. At that point, he would be um, entertaining my question 
Um, I think the raising the hand might not work because, especially for me when I'm speaking, I'm not scanning the room for someone looking for attention. Sure. Oftentimes I'm looking at my machine for my notes and so sure. forth. So for them to just say, uh, would you yield for a question is sufficient. I think that's fair. Yeah. Anybody have anything else to add? Mr. Yeah, Kravitz. Uh, the last meeting we talked about a PowerPoint from the RA. I see you got it from the Municipal Association. Did you? I, I haven't heard back from them on it. The communication is still open. Um, we're still trying to get them in here to um, lock something down. I do have something to update you on the NHMA my presentation, and hopefully um, upon hearing, getting some, some sort of fruition from the DRA to get them in here for a presentation as well. That is the goal. Um, Mr. Jones. So when you're recognized, as I just was, mm -hmm. by the chair, uh, you have that floor until you yield it. Is that true? Correct. Okay. So long, keeping in mind the early topic of... of Bounds of, of reasonableness. Yeah, reasonableness and redundancy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, want, I really want to give everybody the chance to speak on, an op, op, on a, any given topic and um, get, their, get their point across. Thank you. I do have one little point. Sure. One thing is we don't need to make comment for something that everyone speaks of. Mm -hmm. If Bob makes a comment and then another person, you know, has to go back over that again. If Mike makes a comment, someone has to go back over that again. Um, if we can keep that flow going without responding to everything that everyone says, I think yeah, I think it'll be I think, a lot quicker. Um, last year, I know there were several times when um, I know in regards to IT stuff, Tim had made a point. I didn't need to sit there and, and repeat everything Tim said because the mm. point had been made. Um, and and so I, I yielded my time. And I, I think that people, um, if we continue to follow that trend, our meetings will stay concise to the point and things won't get lost in translation. And so long as the points get made, though, that's the thing. If you do have something you want to mention that hasn't already been brought up, by all means, we're here to inform and we're here to educate. Um, and if you have a point that needs to be bring it up, uh, brought up, bring it up. Um, there could be a voter at home that's sitting watching that, that has the same question you do or the same point. And we should discuss, this is the forum to discuss those points. And I want to give everybody that opportunity. Um, and I know that taxpayers and, and citizens talk to you guys. And, you know, it's your job to bring them here and bring their concerns here and discuss them. Mr. Pierce. When it comes to rules and regulations, one of the things we had at least a couple of three years in the past was if somebody had come in from the outside as not a member, and if the, vote, the committee voted to allow them to speak, it was perfectly fine. Um, I have no problem with that. I, I, um, I, I didn't... Did we have an instance of that last year that we not, used? Not that I can remember, and I don't think it happened it again before. It was two or three it's, years ago. It's, it's been a while back. When, okay. It was before I, when I was on the budget committee previously. Okay. Yeah, I'd be more uh, than happy to entertain because that. Because every once in a while we might have somebody that we want to talk to, and if the committee is allowed to vote on it, to, to let them vote, I think that's fine as far as I'm concerned, if everybody else is fine with that. I would be okay with that. So I agree, but, but I would qualify that as saying that it's a majority committee decision, is that my understanding? That's yes. what I yes. understood, yeah. Even, even a request for appointment would be the same thing? Uh, a majority decision to have somebody come in? As if someone, if to, I someone think, has to yeah, make I an I think if the majority of the board wants somebody to come in and, and, and talk No, I'm asking, is that the mechanism by which an appointment could, would be requested? That it would then be submitted to the committee to, uh, as a whole to be okay. voted on. Yes, I do see your point. That's that's what I would understand it to be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But you got also the thing of it is there's once in a while somebody will want to know if they can make public comment at the budget hearing. Well, there is no such vehicle. But if he, they do come in with something they might want to bring to our attention, and if we vote to allow them to speak, that was the that's the question. Yeah. And I I, I already agree with you, Mike. Dave. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'm being Check redundant for your benefit. Beforehand. Excessively. And I, and I honestly <laughs> think if there is a member of the public that has a, feels the need to come address the budget committee, I would encourage them to give me um, contact. Where we don't usually have public comments in our meetings scheduled, right. Right. I would be more than happy to entertain the public to come in here. And, and um, I would just ask that it be a formalized request through me so that way I can put it on the agenda. And... Um, 
and and make sure we have it all our ducks in a row. But yeah, I don't recall doing that last year, but I, I do. Yeah, it I don't think it's before. been done for a long time. I yeah. can remember mm -hmm. several years ago there was some debate about somebody coming in and wanting to speak, and then there was somebody complaining on the budget committee that didn't like it, blah, 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 and I thought it was smart to have input to the budget committee if the majority agreed, and it's a majority decision, okay. obviously. Uh, was there any other discussion on rules of conduct or guidance or any of the voting record or anything like that? Well, the Mr. simplest Press. way to handle it is just on your agenda, put public comment. If there's nobody here and nobody wants to speak, it's... No, you can't. Uh, uh, that's the way the board of selectmen works. We could do it. We could do it, but where we don't have a you lot of public comment. Yeah. I, I think just sending me an email. Um, my email is readily available to anybody on the town website. If if they want, if, if somebody wants to come in, I think they they know how to get a hold of me, and I, I'd be more than happy to uh, make accommodations for that and bring that to the board's attention um, to to give them adequate time to speak. Um, if there's nothing more on that. Um, Keeping on old business.